Hi, today we'll see how to find the operating point of a pump in a system. It means that we'll find the flow and the height that the water will reach. For this purpose, we must know the characteristic curves of the pump. We've talked about them in other videos of this channel. I'll leave the links in the description. Today we'll focus on the flow versus height curve. As shown in the figure, the system will operate in that point where these two curves cross. There will be a flow and a manometric head. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus Viana. I'm a retired professor of hydraulics. Now I'm a consultant engineer. I work with hydraulics mostly when applied to sanitary and environmental engineering. As we know, a pump has its characteristic curves like this one, that shows the flow versus head relationship for a given impeller diameter, these ones that show its efficiency, these ones that show the required power, and this one that shows the required NPSHR. Now, each system has its own characteristic curve that we must find. It begins with what we call geometric head, it's the difference between the head that we wish to reach and the initial head. The head losses corresponding to each flow in the system must be added to the geometric head. In the case of our problem, the geometric head is the difference between the elevation of the outlet of the pipe at the reservoir and the water level in the suction sump. Now we must find the head losses. We have a video showing how to do that. I'll leave its link in the description below. In order to spare time, we'll use a simplified head loss formula. It can be applied to many practical conditions, as we'll see. Imagine this case in which water flows with a small velocity in the interior of a small diameter pipe with regular interior roughness value, and this case in which water flows with a larger velocity in the interior of a greater diameter pipe with low interior roughness value. Let's assume that the water temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, so its kinematic viscosity is 10 to minus 6 square meters second. We can calculate the Reynolds number and the K over D relationship for each case. They vary a lot. For the first case, we find F equals 0 0.027, and for the second case, we find F equals 0 0.015. Let's see what happens in the first case. Substituting the values in the Darcy Weisbach formula, and after some algebraic work, we find this expression for the head losses. Let's do the same for the second case, substituting the values in the Darcy Weisbach formula and after some algebraic work, we find this expression for the head losses. This is the simplified expression that we'll use from now on. Now we can calculate the head losses in our pumping systems. Let's start with the suction, we'll begin with the pipe. We substitute the values in the formula and find this expression. We'll put it up here and start with the minor losses. We can rewrite the formula, which turns into this. Just to make some room, we'll put it here. Let's draw this table containing the fittings. Here they are. Here are the values of their coefficients and their quantities. We just have to multiply the coefficients by their quantities and sum their products. Then we bring the results to the formula and find this expression. We'll leave it up here and continue with the minor losses in the section. There's a gradual reduction. In cases like this, we consider it the smaller diameter. Here's what we find. We'll leave it up here. They represent all the head losses in the suction. So, 
we sum them and find this. Let's keep it up there and start with the discharge losses. Here is what we find for the pipes, for the minor losses and for the diffuser. The expressions for the discharge losses are all there. We just have to sum them and here is what we find. We write the expressions in the figure, suction and discharge. For the entire system, we just have to sum them. And this is what we find. We'll write it over there. We rewrite the expressions, dividing the coefficients by 1 million, so we can put on Q values in liters per second instead of cubic meters per second. Now, here are the pump curves. Let's draw this table containing the head losses in the system for different values of Q and fill it with the values of monometric head. We only have to sum the geometric head value, which is equal to 30 meters, to each head loss value. Now we draw another table containing the values of Q and H extracted from the pump curve. Let's transform the Q values from cubic meters per hour to liters per second. Now we have the data to draw the characteristic curves of the pump and the system. See what it looks like. We can read the values of Q and H at the operating point. 7.7 .7 liters per second and 31.5 meters. Of course, we can get the same result by doing some algebra. We find the quadratic expression to represent the pump characteristic curve. The least square method is a good way to do it. I'll make a video about the least squares. We put together the pump and system expressions and find this second degree equation. Solving it, we find the values for Q. Of course, we ignore the negative one. We find the H value, substituting the value of Q in one of the former expressions. Here is what we get when we bring the result to the pump chart. The flow value has to be transformed from liters per second to cubic meters per hour. It's easy, you just have to multiply it by 3.6. This allows us to find the BHP and the required NPSH in the same chart. But this is a topic for another video. Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.